Welcome to video number nine in the Using iTrain tutorial series. My name is Bob. In this video we'll be defining our feedbacks. Welcome back. We are where we left off from the last video with tutorial 8 layouts loaded. In that last video we identified where all our blocks would be located. We inserted our feedback elements, block elements and direction arrow elements. And then we selected all the items in the section of track and grouped them together using the group keys. In this video we're going to deal with the short piece of track that we created in the middle here and then we're going to define our feedbacks. In the last session we made a lot of changes to the switchboard so before we do any more work let's run the diagnostic to see if we've introduced any errors. So the diagnostic is up here in the view drop down menu and then scroll down to diagnosis or you could press Control D and here you see it immediately runs a diagnostic and reports any errors. We will ignore the first and last ones and deal with those later but we can deal with these four in the middle and they refer to no length being assigned to each of the turnouts. So we can immediately correct those from this report here. We can just double click on the error and then it brings up the properties window for the turnout. Then we go to the length and speed tab and then here we have the column length in which we insert the length of our turnouts. The turnouts on my little test track are all 16 and a half centimeters so we will enter that for both the straight and the branched lengths. To do that you double click on it, select it all then type in 16.5 and enter and then do the same for this one double click select it all type in 16.5 and enter and then press OK to save it. Now if I start the diagnostic again using the start button here you'll see that that error or warning for turnout one has now gone. So I'll repeat that for the other three turnouts and then come back to you. Okay so I entered 16 and a half centimeters for each of the turnouts and now if we run the diagnostic again you can see that the errors have now gone and we'll deal with these other two later. So now we can close the diagnostic. Now's a good time to save the layout again. So we'll go up to File and Save As, and this time we'll call it Tutorial Number Nine and press the OK key. Right, so let's open the Switchboard Editor up to the Edit drop down to Switchboard and into the Editor. In a well-defined switchboard, when you are in edit mode, as we are here, none of the track elements should be black, except for the turnouts, which can either be black or lilac. Now we have a small section of track in the middle here, which is black. It's a short section of track, which is too small to make into a block. The way to deal with this situation is to group this section of track with a turnout so that iTrain sees these two sections of track here as just one complete turnout. And we need to change the length of the turnout so that it represents the length of the turnout plus the length of the piece of track that we're grouping together with it. So if our turnout is 16 and a half centimeters and this length of track is 10 centimeters 
we would enter 26 and a half centimeters into the length of the turnout here. However, in our little example here, this section of track doesn't actually exist on the model railway. We just inserted it on the switchboard to help make it easier to identify the locations of the turnouts. So in this example, we don't need to add the length of this piece of track to the turnout. We can just group them both together. So we'll highlight them both, then press the G key, and then click away and press the G key again. And you can see these two pieces of track are now lilac in color. And only the turnouts are black or lilac. Good. So we can press save and then we can move on to defining the feedbacks. We'll start at siding one. So we double click on it. And as usual, we will give it a name which will be S1 and a description of siding one. In the type field, we select the type of feedback sensors that we're using. And we're using occupancy sensors in these tutorials. You may have other types. It's up to you to choose the type appropriate to your layout. So we will choose occupancy which are also known as current sensing detectors. The inverted we can leave unchecked. Length is the length of track that we want this feedback sensor to cover. In our simple example, where we have only got one sensor in the whole of the block, we want that sensor to be able to detect a train anywhere along the entire length of the block. So the length we will enter in here is the total length of the whole block. And if you remember, ideally a block should be longer than the longest train that you're using on your layout. We will be using the three trains that came with the demo layout and the longest train is 130 centimeters. So we will make all of our blocks 150 centimeters so that the train fully fits into the whole of the block. So we highlight the figure, type in 150 and return and that's the length done. And then in interface, we will select the DR5000 and the address we will give to this first sensor is address one. And then that is it. We don't need to touch the delay here. They are set at these default values and we can leave them at that. So we just press OK. And if we look in the feedback tab in the browser, we'll see that feedback S1 has now been entered. So now we just repeat the same steps for all the other feedbacks, giving them their unique names and different addresses. And for a small layout like this, that's probably the easiest way. But if you had a larger layout with a lot of feedback sensors, there is another way that you can create the objects. And that is by going up to an existing control object, clicking on it, and then right clicking and selecting template. And this works really well where you've got a numerical sequence. And what you do is replace the number with the hash. So we we'll replace the one with a hash there, replace the one with a hash there. The type of feedback we leave as occupancy in the list and then in the numbers here we've already created one and now we want to create up to number six so we'll start from two and we'll finish on number six and we'll 
not be correcting the existing one that we've already made. So we can untick that and then we press OK. And then you'll see up here that iTrain has created control objects for the sequence of feedback sensors. We still need to put in data like the address and uh, the length of the feedback sensor then assign these control objects to the feedback elements. You can do it this way, which is to grab the object and drag it down onto the feedback. And now if we double click on it, we bring up the properties window. We see that it's already entered siding 2 and S2. The occupancy is automatically selected. We just need to put in the length, which is 150, return, and the address. And on this one, it will be address 2. And then we're done. We're OK. Then we'll quickly do the same for S3. We grab it, bring it down onto S3 feedback, double click on it. We just need to put in the 150 return and the address, which will be three for this one. Press OK. Go to number four. Bring that down onto S4. Double click. Name is in. Put in 150 and the address of four. Press OK. And the last two we will do a different way. Instead of sliding S5 down onto the element, we'll just double click on it. And now we have a blank properties window, but this time we'll go to the board item. And because we've created the control objects up here, when we click on the drop down here, you'll see that they are listed. And we can select S5 from there and just enter 150 in here. I'm going to change the name from S5 to W and this to Siding West. And then we'll give it address of 5, press OK, and then we can do the same on the last one. We'll go up to the board item, we'll select it from the drop down, we'll give this one a name of E for East and siding east and 150 return and address 6 and OK and we're done. In the browser we can see the list of all the feedbacks that we've created with their addresses listed here as well. Let's press saved to save what we've done and then we can move on to defining the blocks which is what we will do in the next video. See you then, take care.